Hey everybody, Ryan McCaffrey with IGN, joined by IGN tech editor extraordinaire Elena Yee. Welcome back from the Microsoft Windows 10 event up in uh, Redmond at Microsoft campus. Now, uh, on Podcast Unlocked this week, we were talking all about the Microsoft HoloLens. That was the big exciting takeaway yes. from, uh, from this event, for at least for gamers, really. And it's like, okay, how could it apply to games? What, what's the future? They showed a Minecraft tech demo. Uh, you actually got to try it. Yes, so I, I had hands on with I it. I have not spoken with you off air yet. So this is, I am s as curious <laughs> as the entire audience as to whether or not this was smoke and mirrors or whether you were legitimately impressed by this. I, you know, to my surprise, I was legitimately impressed. Um, you know, oftentimes I, I go into like virtual reality demos and just to be clear, the HoloLens is actually an augmented reality headset. Right. It's not virtual reality. Right, should have clarified up front. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, you see through it. Yes. But, and then there are screens and cameras. Yes. And you're basically wearing a computer on your head. Yes. And it will project, you know, holographic images over real world things or you know that's how it, yeah. it fools your eye into thinking that. right they call it like mixed reality that's kind of one of the buzzwords they were using up there. I live in mixed reality that's that's I think IGN is mixed reality right um, so I did actually get hands-on time with this augmented reality um, headset and you know I've done virtual reality um, demos before sure, I mean, just, Oculus yeah I just came off of uh, doing the Crescent Bay demo at CES yep, which latest, you know I really I was actually really excited by yeah. that um, but this was different for me because it wasn't like just excitement. There is this moment. So I went through four demos, um, and the first two actually were the more gripping ones, even though they weren't gaming related. Mars. Uh, yeah. The so Mars there was a one? Mars one, and then there was a Skype, uh, a Skype one where it's basically someone walking you through the installation of a light switch. Right. And then um, there's a Minecraft one where they kind of have you know Minecraft. Um, just kind of spread over this living room. Yeah, uh, you're like Godzilla scenario. over your Minecraft Pretty world, much. basically, right? You see like the little zombies moving. Um, and then the last one was not hands-on, actually, I should say. It was three hands-on and one that was kind of uh, just shown to us, which is the uh, 3D modeling, 3D creation right, right. one. The, uh, I think it's called Hollow Studio. Um, All right, so take me to Mars first. Mars. So Mars is actually the one that I, I actually had that moment of, Wow, like this is really cool. I mean, I think a lot of people might feel that a virtual reality representation would be more effective, but for me, I actually prefer this, where it's like that kind of mixed reality sense, right. where it's that I can still interact with it. I still feel like I have a sense of real-world objects. Yeah, because you can plant markers and mm -hmm. point out things, and t yeah. do have you know use it for more educational, interesting purposes, right? Right, and you can, uh, this one was also, there was a part where they actually did a collaboration, so I had someone from NASA's uh, JPL lab hmm. talking with me and basically walking me through the scenery saying like, do you notice like the sedimentation here? Do you notice that this kind of rock looks I'm from Earth, I don't know anything about Mars, why are you like, asking me this right? question? Like, You're highly educated, I'll <laughs> let you tell me the answer to that. I'm just going to say, sure, yeah, absolutely. I'll just put the marker wherever you want me to. But so. Yeah, well, I mean, so the sensation was, I mean, were you sort of mentally fooled and taken away a bit, or, or was it more of just a, or, or like a minority report thing? I guess it's like somewhere between the two, yeah. where it's like, it's just so, the images are very static and they're not like super high definition images, they're just whatever the, um, the rover has pulled, yeah. but having it shown in 3D and sort of being able to, and still being able to uh, interact with like the computer and move a mouse around and like click on the environment, kind of gives this sense of, wow, this is what it would feel like to actually stand on the surface of Mars yeah. and look around, which is something that I don't think I'll ever actually get to experience in my life, you know? Yeah, we probably won't live right. long enough for that. No. Um, so it was just like kind of like glimpse of like beyond imagination yeah. that I really thought was pretty cool. So uh, then how about repairing the light switch? That was really kind of weird too, just because, you know, I, I used to be kind of my dad's like grunt, you know, when I was growing <laughs> up, I would, I would be the one who assisted with- Free labor. Yeah, pretty much. And so this was a very strange sensation of having a, which was a kind of solitaire experience because, I mean, there's a demo, people behind me, yeah. but it's just me and that light switch and those wires. But then I have someone talking to me and marking up my field of view and saying, you know, actually drawing an arrow saying- Like a bad adventure game puzzle. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> um, 
and it's having this voice in my ear, but at the same time, like, there's not that physical sense of having someone there with you. Yeah. So it's just kind of eerie. So they're up on a, is there, they're up on a little Skype screen in yeah, your so field of view? Yeah, so like, it's just like, you can pin it to your view and move it around with your gaze as you go. Okay. Or you can actually just leave it off to the side as you look around the room. So when you turn your head, it's the, the screen's there, and when you turn your head, it's not if there you anymore? Leave it unpinned. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Like, I don't want to look at you right now. I'm going to look this way. Right. So, and, and then what, what's the interactive element of that one? Um, interactive in the sense of, so for example, so the light switch was, you know, right in front of me. Yeah. And then um, the person that was walking me through it had a Surface uh, Pro tablet that she was marking up with a stylus. So she was looking at what I was looking at and where the light switch was supposed to go, she'd actually like draw an arrow and say like, I want you to orient it this way, kind of drew a sketch. And um, then, you know, she's like, look down there where the tools are for me. And then I want you to grab this one. And that would show up in a 3D holographic, that arrow would be represented well, in your... The, the arrow itself was actually a 2D representation, okay. but I think it's just the, the whole function is that there's a the hologram being projected right. into the real world so that you can actually get someone pointing like, no, no, that one, right? Hmm. As opposed to someone talking you through it where you're, you're asking, is it the white one? Is it the one that just shocked me? <laughs> <laughs> Do I not touch this wire? Can you dial 911 with the with the HoloLens, please? I'm unresponsive. Send help. help. <laughs> My heart has stopped beating. Uh, and then Minecraft. So Mine Godzilla Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, right. Where it's like raw. And you actually have a point of that where you know you pick the shovel tool and you can actually dig into the environment. So there's one point where literally dig into the yeah, environment. Yeah. So there's yeah. like this kind of um, bookshelf. And um, my demo told me, you know, take the shul uh, sorry, the shovel tool, and like, you know, use the air tap feature, which is basically like clicking a mouse. That's mm -hmm. the representation of it, in, with the um, the hollow lens. And I, I dug a hole between this tower and the zombies, so that if they tried to cross, they would fall into the lava right. below. So as that sounds like connect times a million. Yeah. Connect is never, for all, it just it's never lived up to. You know, latency-wise, what even in either version, what we wanted. Did this, did the motion, that finger tap you're talking about, did it work well? Was it smooth? Was it responsive? Um, I would say that specifically for something like that, where you would notice the latency, I did feel a little bit like slightly disconnected from it. Right. Um, there was a device at CES I used, which was like a mouse that you put on your finger. Mm -hmm. It had that similar feeling where it's like you can kind of get a more accuracy than Connect, but there's still that kind of slight delay or not just quite there yet. Not quite calibrated tightly enough where it feels very one to one. Like I moved my hand just this much, and the pointer moved right. just that much. So overall, though, super impressed. Yes. I really cool. would I mean, like to see more of yay. it. Yay! I mean, this is yeah. good. This is, uh... They were talking it up so much on stage that, you know, there's always that part of your brain that kind of holds back the oh, excitement because yeah. you're not sure how much of it is just, you know, buzz and PR excitement. But you put it on and you stand in front of Mars, stand on Mars, see the rover Curiosity, right. Curiosity rover right in front of you. It's pretty awesome. Shipping this fall for only $6 million, Microsoft Hollands. We don't know how much it's going to cost. Yeah, no Probably not $6 million, but uh, we'll obviously be covering this thing extensively any chance we get. Elena, thanks so much. For more on all things HoloLens, Xbox, whatever Microsoft, whatever crazy experiment they've got going on, we'll be covering it right here on IGN.